a reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, When Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the farther they went from me, sacrificing to the Baals and burning incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk, who took them in my arms. I drew them with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed, my pity is stirred. I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again, for I am God and not man, the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see your face, O Lord, and we shall be saved. Let us see your face, O Lord, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power. Let us see your face, O Lord, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Let us see your face, O Lord and we shall be saved. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, those who think that the God of the Old Testament is a fiery, angry God and the God of the New Testament is all about love and flowers are missing passages from both the Old and the New. Missing passages, of course, about Jesus as the stern, correcting Savior that he is, and missing passages from the Old Testament like that of today. I will draw them with human cords, with bands of love, like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. It reminds us of Isaiah, can a mother forget her own child, be without tenderness for the child of her womb, yet even should she forget, I will never forget you. Or Ezekiel, shepherding them, healing their wounds, and so many other passages from throughout the Old Testament showing the tender, gentle, merciful love of God. Because, brothers and sisters, this is exactly the same God. Old in the New Testament, the, the, the God of the Old Testament is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, the God of the Old Testament also working outside of himself is also Jesus when the three persons of the Blessed Trinity are doing something outside of themselves, it's one God. It's the same power, the same mind, the same divinity. It is all three of them working the works that they do. The same God, the same love, the same infinite mercy. I will draw them, 
Oh, he says here in Hosea, with human cords. Suggesting to us, of course, the incarnation. That God will not only draw us with human love in the sense of an analogy, He will draw us literally with human love by becoming human, by jumping in to our humanity. The incarnation, God in human language, showing us the pity that this reading speaks of, showing us His heart, seeing and in fact letting us see the blood and water from that heart flow out from His side on the cross. He doesn't want to punish us. He doesn't want to let the flames consume us. He is on our side. And brothers and sisters, as we proclaim this, some will not listen, just as God is saying in Hosea, some are not listening to Him. So as Jesus suggests in the Gospel here, some will not listen to us, even though all we're trying to do is bring God's peace and reconciliation and love and salvation. Some will refuse it. It's the mystery of evil, the mystery of darkness. The light came into the world and some preferred the darkness. The point here in the gospel is we are not to lose peace over that. And I want to emphasize that with you. Jesus says you go into a house as a missionary of the gospel. You proclaim peace. Some, see, God does not impose his peace. Some will not be worthy of it because they will just shut it off. Their priorities are different. So Jesus says, if they're worthy, if they receive it, it will come to them. But if not, let it return to you. The peace is never wasted. Let it return to you. Don't be disturbed that others are rejecting you when you give them the love of God or proclaim to them the gospel message. Let your peace return to you. We are always unperturbed. We are always steady of soul and immersed with peace of mind when other people will persecute us. Some run away from the very possibility of persecution. Oh, let's make sure nobody is displeased with us. That's really a silly way to try to proclaim the kingdom of God. Focus on making sure that you are proclaiming the fullness of the truth with clarity. And that when, not if, but when, there are those who will not receive the message or the grace that you are trying to offer, let your peace return to you. Let nothing disturb you whatsoever. Let the God of peace be with you. Lord Jesus, may we live these words and may we proclaim your gospel with joy and with your peace. Amen.